SVG is a vector graphics format that's used for images. What that means is instead of having data for every individual pixel of the image, as other formats do, it actually uses data in XML format, and that defines the various parts of the image and their relationships. So all the lines, shapes, colors, gradients, filters, and so on and so forth are all created via code. This type of image is appropriate for graphics, but not for photographs. Because SVG stores the data in this way, instead of by pixel by pixel, it's resolution independent, which means that you can resize the image to any dimension without degrading the quality, and you don't need to have separate images for different resolutions. The only downside of using SVG is that IE8 and earlier as well as Android 2.3 and earlier don't support SVG images at all. So in those browsers, you'll need to use a little bit of JavaScript to replace the images with images in a different format. There's plugins that allow you to do this, and I'll show you one of those. I'm going to start off by demonstrating how you can create an SVG image. I usually create SVG images by using Illustrator. If you don't have Illustrator, I'll also show you a converter that you can use on the internet for free. But let me show you how to do it in Illustrator first. Here I have a file open in Illustrator. This is a vector graphic, and once I've done creating the graphic, I've used the Pathfinder tool to unite the shape. This will create a compound shape and help to reduce complexity. After you've used the Pathfinder tool, it's important to crop the artboard so that it just fits exactly around the image. This will eliminate you using any additional file size. So by default, the artboard is probably bigger than your image. You're going to need to go into File, Document Setup, and go to Edit Artboards, and make sure that your artboards fit snugly around the image. Once you've done this, you're ready to save the image out as an SVG. In order to save the image from Illustrator, you'll go to File, Save, and I'm going to do Save As because I've already saved my image once. And then you're going to navigate to where you want to save the file. For the format, you're going to choose SVG, and you're going to go ahead and click Save. Now it's asking me if I want to replace the image because I'm saving it as the same name. I will click Replace. This is going to open up the SVG dialog box. You can pretty much use the default settings here. The only thing that I would recommend is changing the type setting to SVG I believe the default is Adobe CEF, so change that to SVG, and make sure that your image location is embedded. Now, if you click OK, it's going to go ahead and create the SVG graphic file for you. In addition to having an SVG graphic file, you can also go straight to the code. And if you click the SVG code button, this will open up your text editor, which is going to display the XML code that's used to create this graphic. This code looks a lot like an HTML document, and we can use this in our file to display the image. I would recommend that you only get the code that starts where the SVG tag opens. You don't need all of this if you're going to be inserting this onto its own unique document. So you can just get rid of that and just start with the SVG code. We're going to go back to Illustrator, and we're going to create the image, so I'll click OK and that's going to save my file out. Now that I've saved the file, I'm ready to utilize it in my document. Just so you know, I'm going to be using this chameleon image, but I also have another image, a fish, that I've created here. The fish image is a little bit more complex. It has a lot of other pieces and components that are part of it, so the file size for the fish is going to be slightly bigger. But either way, they're both going to be SVG images. Let's go ahead and add these images into our HTML document. The starting point for my document is a simple HTML5 file. I have a few embedded styles that are part of my document. All the CSS does is create a 50% width size for my divs and puts a border around the divs. In addition to that, I've styled the text to be Verdana. The HTML is simply div tags which contain paragraphs that describe how I'm going to be using the SVGs within my document. Let's start off by creating a code version of our fish image first. 
What I recommend that you do to get started is you optimize your code. By using an optimizer, you can certainly reduce the file size considerably. Before I show you that, though, I do want to show you a free converter that's available in case you don't have Illustrator. Mobile Fish has a free converter available. It allows you to upload BMPs, GIFs, JPEGs, or PNG files and convert them into SVGs. The process is very simple. You simply choose the file type. It just has to be under 100K. And then you put in the little access code and you'll click Create SVG. Once you do that, it'll output an SVG image that you can download. Since we already have the SVG, I'm going to go right to the optimizer. The optimizer is going to allow us to save file size. I like Peter Collinridge's optimizer, so I'm going to click this link, which opens up the SVG editor. From this page, you can upload an SVG file, or you can actually paste SVG code right in here. I'll upload the file. I'm going to choose the file and navigate to where I have it on my computer. Here I am in the directory. We'll work from the chameleon file that we just created. I'm going to open it and I'm going to click upload. This now takes me to the optimize tab. This will give you a preview of what your image looks like and it'll also show you the original file size as well as the optimized file size so far. You can go through these various settings to try to optimize the file size further. For optimization, you start off with none. Go ahead and click conservative to see if it degrades the image. For this particular image, I don't really see any difference. But if I go to extreme, you can see that my image is altered significantly. I'll have to leave it on conservative. Then I'm going to go into advanced options and I pretty much just go through and click the various choices. And if I watch the optimized file size down here, I can see how much it'll change by optimizing this down. Some of the options may affect the image, some may not. You can see when I've clicked all of these options, I'm able to reduce the file down 1K. That might not seem like much, but if you're using a bunch of different images on your website, every single K will impact the ultimate load time. Once you're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and go to output since I want to use the code Let's go back through this process one more time so I can show you the difference between the chameleon and the fish. I'm going to upload my fish image. It takes me to the optimized settings. You can see what the original file size is and what the optimized file size is. Now if I go to the conservative optimized setting, you can see that my image immediately starts to degrade and extreme is going to really mess it up. So I'll leave the optimization at none. I can still reduce the file size down by using the advanced options. Here I've managed to reduce the file size a little bit more than 2K. I'll go to the output setting and you can see that there's considerable code here because this image is much more complex. I'm going to select all the code and copy it. And then I'll go back into my HTML editor and I'll paste that code in. This is the code that the file needs in order to render that graphic. There is a little bit of extra code in here that we don't need. The only attributes that we need within the SVG tag are the XMLNS information and the view box information. So I'm going to get rid of version, XY, width and height. I'll get rid of enable background, but I'll leave the XML space. In addition to getting rid of some of this code, I'm going to add a class, which is going to allow me to style this with CSS a little bit later on. There is one other little bit of code that I just noticed that's part of the path. Right here it is assigning a fill color of black. This will override my CSS so I'm going to delete this as well. Now I'm going to save my file and if we go back and look at it in the browser, nothing's changed. But if I make some CSS, I'm just going to use the hook of codefish and I'm going to assign the fill and give it a color value. You can now see that when I refresh in the browser, my fish becomes this new teal color. Because I added a class of SVG fish, I can use that to control the sizing of the fish. I'm going to set the width to 50%. If we save our file and refresh it in the browser, you can now see that my image has scaled down. And because this is an SVG image, the image is still going to always stay crisp and clear.
no matter what the size. Let's look at some other ways that we can add SVGs into our file. One of the easiest ways to incorporate an SVG into your file is to simply add a link to the SVG image. I'm going to come into the div that I'm calling PickFish and I'm going to open up an image tag. I'm going to set the SRC attribute and I'm going to navigate to where my fish is saved. My fish is in the images directory and we're going to point to fish2.svg. Then I'm going to close the image tag. If we save this and refresh in the browser, you'll now see that I have the fish image displaying within the div tag. You can use CSS on this image just like you would any other image that would normally appear on the page. Another way that you can include SVGs into your project is to use the data URI. Data URIs might save you a little bit in file size and they can also be very efficient because the data is right there and it doesn't require an additional HTTP request. When you use the image method of pulling the image, you are using another HTTP request. In order to create the data URI, you'll need to use an online tool. MobileFish has a really good one in order to do that. I'm going to go to the MobileFish Base64 encoder and this is going to allow me to create the code that I'll need to create the data URI. Base64 code is just compressed code. It's going to be much smaller than the default SVG code. There's two ways that you can get the Base64 code. You can input your source data in this window right here or you can upload a file. We'll just upload a file. I'm going to change the max char characters per line to 999, which is the highest value that I can set. And then I'll enter the access code so that I can process my request. Now I'll click Convert. And if I scroll down, here's the compressed code. I'm going to select All and copy it. There's two ways that you can use the data URI code. One way is just to enter it right into the HTML. We'll do that first. Here I'm going to use the image tag again. I'm going to set the source attribute. And inside the quotes, I'm going to type data colon image forward slash SVG plus XML semicolon base 64. Then I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to paste all that code in there. Now because of the 999 characters, we do have some additional line breaks and we want to get rid of those because they might cause problems with our code. So I'll just quickly go through and delete those additional line breaks. Great, those are all gone now. I'm going to save my file and let's check it out in the browser. Now you can see that my data URI fish is displaying on the page just like the image fish. They're really identical. There's no difference in how they display. It's just implementation. And it looks like I just forgot to close my image tag, so let's do that here. Ah, oh, that looks a little bit better. The final way to incorporate an SVG into your file is to use it as a CSS background. Let me show you how to do that. For this, I'm going to select this whole slew of ugly code again. This is the base64 code. And we actually need the data information that we just entered in the source. So I'm going to select everything inside of the quotes right there and copy it. We're going to go up into our CSS and I'm going to make a new style for .cssfish, which is the name that I gave the div where I want this to display. Then we're going to set the background URL. And in the parentheses, I'm going to paste all this code. I'll close the parentheses and I'm going to specify no repeat just like we would on a normal CSS background image, and I'm going to use center center. Let's save this, and if we look in our browser, you can see that I'm not actually seeing the image. That's because since this is a background image, I also need to specify a height for this div. Let's go back into our HTML editor, and let's add a height on this div. Looks like my selector wasn't totally correct either, so let me correct that. And now you can see the images displaying. Hopefully that gave you an idea of how you can use SVGs in your projects. The last thing that I want to show you is providing some fallback content for those older browsers that might not support SVG. We're going to use a simple JavaScript plugin 
which detects SVGs on the website and it automatically looks for a standard image to use as fallback for those older, less capable browsers. The one that I like is called SVGZ. It's very small and concise. If you go to the URL, and I'll provide all of these for you, you can go ahead and download a zipped file with the various files that you need. The only thing that you're going to really need is the svgz.js file. Down here it tells you how you can utilize this, but I'll just show you in my file. I'm going to go back into my file, and I've already saved the JavaScript folder into my scripts directory, and I'm going to open up two script tags. The first one is going to point to the external JavaScript file. This is located in my scripts directory, and it's called svgz.js. I'm going to set my type to text JavaScript, then I'll close the script tag. Now that I have that, I need to add a little bit of custom JavaScript code. Inside of my script tag, I'm just going to type svgz.init and pass on the parameters of false as well as the file format that I want to use for a replacement. If a browser comes to the page that doesn't support SVGs, it's going to look for a ping file in the same directory as my SVG and swap it out with the ping file. You can see in my directory that I have a fish.ping file. This file will re be replaced when an SVG can't be used. So this couple lines of code are really easy to implement and this is a great little polyfill that you can use to add support for the browsers that don't actually support SVGs. Hopefully this has taught you a little bit about SVGs and how that you can incorporate them into your projects. Again, I'll make sure that the links are available, but if you just pause the video right here, you can also access any of these tools that I've specified.